Hey guys, welcome back to the second Maya Python auto rigging tutorial, which is a mouthful as well. Um, I know it's been a while, and the last one, last video, it's like three months ago, uh, but I've been rather busy. I'm uh, doing my master's degree right now, so I'm doing a lot of reading and typing and a lot of uh, thinking. <laughs> uh, but now I finally have some time to actually. Uh, Continue with this uh, video series. So I know uh, people have been waiting for this. So here it is. Here it is. Took a while, but you know, here we are. So let's just dive straight in. Uh, this is what we did last time, right? We just created a bunch of locators and a menu. And today we're gonna make a function in which we can uh, mirror the locators. So if, for example, if we change one of them, one side, we want to be able to mirror them on the other side, right? It's a little bit more neat uh, and helpful. And we're gonna make the actual joints as well. Um, so let's just dive straight in. So this is what we did last time. Right, we did a bunch of stuff. We can create a locator, and that's it. Right, you can move them, but you can't mirror them yet. But you can change the spine count, the fingers amount, etc. And you can delete them. Right, it's a good thing. So let's just first do the uh, part where we actually mirror the locators. So I'm gonna find a nice cozy space somewhere in my code. Uh, let's just do it here. Let me make the function, right? So we're gonna make here a thing called a depth mirror locators, like this. And I'm gonna copy paste this straight away because we also need a button. We can actually push it so it actually does something, right? So again, base same as one we had on top here, right? Uh, L is uh, the mirror left to right. You can also do it from right to left if you want to. Uh, my, in my case, I'm gonna do it from left to right. So. And see is let's do do I just copy paste it? There we go. Mirror locators. Okay. So we have the function, we can actually press it right now, it won't do anything, but yeah. So what we kinda of wanna do, right, is we wanna get all the uh, left locators, we wanna get the position of those locators, and then we wanna paste them on the right locators. Um, that's pretty much what we're gonna do. It sounds really easy, but it takes a little bit more code than you probably realize, but uh, you know, let's just find out, right? So First, let's get all the left locators. I'm gonna get all left locators. Again, the base.ls that we've done before several times. And then I'm gonna find all objects to start with lock underscore l and asterisk. Okay, like this. Right, so we get them all. Let's print them out because we we'll immediately should have an issue. Oh, I should learn how to type locators like this. Let's uh, have a quick look. And we should see a whole bunch of stuff appearing right and immediately if you pay attention you can see that there's a uh, thing here that's not correct so we have the locator elbow over here right but we also get the actual shape so when we start uh, making joints it will make a joint on the elbow and on the elbow shape and that's not what we want right we only want the actual object itself we only want the actual elbow not the elbow shape so we need to filter it in some way uh, of course that can be done um, we're gonna make a new variable. In this case, I'm gonna call it left locators. This is the, the filtered version of it, and then we're gonna use a new function that's called list relatives. And this is a function where you can get the parents and the children of an object. So in this case, I want to get all my left locators. So left locators. And then we can say here p is true, so parent is true, and f says for full path name. So we can so we get the actual entire name of the object. Now when we print it, you'll see that we get only the objects and not the actual shapes. I'm gonna clean this one real fast. Oh, what I, the fuck did I just do? Oh boy. I fucked everything up. There it is. Talk it. Let's delete them, create them, and mirror them. Now you see, you don't get shapes anymore, but you can see that we now also get the master, or the actual parents of all the locators that we have in the scene. Um, don't panic, you know, <laughs> it's actually not a bad thing right now because, uh, well, to be honest, we don't care at this stage, right? Because we, because we only look for objects which has an L and an R in the name. So don't worry about it just now. So we're going to do the same thing here for the right locator. So same method, so all right locators is based on LS. And then we're going to do the same thing, lock underscore R in this case, underscore asterisk. And we're going to filter it again, so right locators is base dot list relatives. And do the same thing, all right locators. 
We only want the parents, so P is true, and we want the full path name, so F is true as well. Cool. So now we have the filtered version of all the left lo uh, locators, all the right locators, and now we only need to get the position of it to paste it on the other one. So what we've done so far, right, is we've used, uh, for example, S uh, in selection, which is pretty handy, but there's also a different one here in Python, which is the uh, C sharp equivalent of a for loop, an actual for loop. So we can say, for example, here for I, uh, for iterator, and then L, uh, it can also be baby or car or B or whatever, and then in enumerate, and then we want to enumerate on the left locators. Okay, so to, to translate this into C sharp, what we used to do in C sharp is for int is I, uh, int I is zero, I is smaller than the left locators, length of the entire array, and then we get I plus plus, right? So this is the equivalent in C sharp. The benefit of this is now we also have the I value here, so this will start at zero and then one and two and three and four. So we can actually use that value to go through a list. In this case, in this case, we want to go through the uh, right locators list. So this is the for loop, and the other one is just a for each loop, right? So the for s in the selection. This is a for each loop, and this is the actual for loop. Okay, so now we can get the position of the object. So we can say pos or position or whatever you want to call it. Then we're gonna get the base dot x form, right? So x form, you can get the uh, position of the object, the scale, the rotation, the local rotation. So you can pretty much get anything you want. In this case, what we want from the object from L, right? But the one that we define over here. And then what do you want to get? Well, we want to first ask him a question. So the query is true, and then we want to get the translation. So we said t is true. But we want to make sure that the, the translation is done in world space, right? So we say ws is true. So get the position of the object in world space, which is helpful because that's exactly what, what we need. So let's test it, right? So we say ping pos. So we get the position. I get an error because I need to add this one over here. Keep forgetting that. Really annoying. Let's leave them. And then we should see a whole list there we go, of objects, right? So this is just nothing but the position of our locators. Now you can also see the downside of a float value, right? You can see here that the one actually has a four all the way in the end. Um, and this is really annoying, or this can be really annoying when you're doing super accurate um, movement of object, for example. And uh, this is called the float uh, rounding error, or floating point rounding error. Um, in this case, we don't care, right? But it can, in some cases, be annoying. But this is the left arm. This is the wrist, for example. Well, sorry, this is the elbow, and this is the wrist, etc. So we can actually, uh, by looking at the position, you can see which object that is. Okay, so now we can paste them on the right locators, right? So we need to move the uh, right locators to the new position, so based on move. And we, what we used to do is position, right? You can do it like this, and then the right locators. Like this, right? The problem is, though, that this will uh, place them exactly on the position that the left locator is on. So we need to invert it somehow. So we need to actually kind of divide it up. So we're going to say pos 0, pos 1, and pos 2, like this. So x, y, z, that's pretty much what it is. But then we're going to invert the x position. So by adding a minus here, you actually invert the value of, in this case, the x position or the x location space. So now I'm check it. Delete them again. We can create the locators. I'm going to move my left arm and then I'm going to mirror it and see now it actually follows it. So I'm going to save it here. And you can see, oh, this is wrong. Apparently, there it is. Sometimes you have to click twice. I don't know why. There you go. Hold it again. There you go. I have no idea why it does this, but you know, whatever. Okay. But it, it mirrors it pretty well. Sometimes you might need to click twice, but you know. Doesn't matter, not really. Okay, so now we can mirror them. It's pretty easy. And now we get to the next stage, right? This is actually the interesting stage, is where we're actually gonna add the joints. So we now have the, have the locators done, except for the legs, but you know, fuck it. Um, so now we're gonna make the actual joints, which is interesting. <laughs> Let's put it like that, right? Um, I was gonna do as well for OOP, but when you can add a different file. I got it working, but it's really tedious and I don't want to confuse people. So I'm going to make a different video about how to import different files. 
so you can have this really neat uh, organization of, of your code. Um, what to do at a different time, probably in the next video. But okay, let's just start doing joints. So, I'm gonna make a new function. I'm gonna do below the mirror locators, and again, I'm gonna make a function called create uh, joints. And we're gonna do them all at the same time, right? Because in this stage, we don't care about left or right, we just wanna make them all at the same time. So, um, if you if you watch my other videos as well, uh, you know that you start making joints from the pelvis, from the root. The pelvis is the root joint. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Uh, but first, we want to get everything nice and organized. So we want to make a group. In this case, we're gonna make a group called Rick. First, I'm gonna check for it. If it exists, is object exists. In this case, like this. And then we're gonna find for something that's called Rick. So if it exists, then print something. Um, Rick already exists. Else, please make a new group. In this case, I'm gonna call it oh, join group. We're gonna make a new group, and we're gonna em which is true. Same thing as the other time, right? Empty group, and the name shall be called Rick. Now, I had some questions about the quotation marks: uh, single or double. Python uh, doesn't care. Um, I'm I'm used to double, uh, double quotes from C sharp, but I just mix up. I don't know why I do this, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, keep it in mind; it doesn't matter at all, right? So we're gonna divide them up a little bit. So I'm gonna first gonna create the spine, and then we're gonna create the arm. Oh, create the arm. Uh, but you see, it's actually not as difficult as you think. I'm gonna make a button. You need a button, of course. Uh, otherwise, you can't do anything. So I'm gonna call it based on. Button uh, is just to create charts. Okay, it's 200. Uh, C is create charts. Like this. I'm sure that it's the same name as the actual function name. I think it is. Cool. So that's it, right? So. We first want to start at the pelvis, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my locator root. So in here, I should probably give a name here, okay, spines. I'm going to find my roots. I'm going to call the root is, again, based on ls, in this case, lock root. Like this, right? Oh. Again, this is the same thing. You have to make sure that it's actually the actual object. Um, by looking for this, this specific object, we find the object. But you can also find the object shape. But in this case, make sure this actual object. Uh, for the next spines, we need that as well. So let's just uh, do it straight away. So we need to find all the spines. So all the spines. Again, dot base dot ls, and then again find the lock underscore spine underscore like this. Now in a different trick, um, you can also search for the Type is locator like this, right? So it only looks for an object that has the actual locator name. So just to be safe, I'm going to show you here as well. So again, same thing based on the list of relatives. Uh, again, spine all, all spines. Parent is true. Full name is also true. Like this. Okay. So we first need to get position of our actual root object, right? So we're going to do the same thing. So we need to find the object position, so let's call this root plus. Which again, it's the xform function, so based on xform. Of what, which object do you want to get the uh, xform of? In this case, the root, and then we want to say query is true. We want to get the translation, so where it is in space, and we want to make sure that it's in real space. WS is true. And then we're going to make a joint, so root joint. And then we say base dot joint. I, I know it's, ma it's magic. Um, then we make sure that we say, okay, radius, you can actually define the radius as well. So let's make it nice and small. Let's do uh, 0.1, I don't know, maybe we'll find out. Okay, then you can say p equals, well, p is just case for position. So where do you want to position that? In this case, I want to position at the root position, right? That one that we just got. And then we're going to get a name, because we like to be organized. Rick root. In this case, I have the prefix called Rick. You can also call it baby, I don't care. As long as it makes sense for you, then you can do anything you want, right? Okay. 
So, question now is where do you want to um, turn this to, right? In this case, if you don't leave it like this, let's see what it looks like. I'm guessing it's going to be a child or something. So I'm going to create the joints. I have one joint over here. See? Beautiful joint. Let's have a quick look at the outliner. You can see that it's somewhere in here. That's actually lucky, right? Because I've also had instances where the joint actually became a child of some other thing. I'm like, what the fuck? Um, I'm going to show you how to make this case just for, for funsies. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to show you how to make a how to make sure that it actually parent of the world, so how do you, how you unparent an object. Um, in this case, I'm going to show you real fast. So, this is un unparenting uh, root joint, and then you say w world is true, and absolute is true. So, this means it's now a child of the world. So, this is how you unparent it. Might be helpful to know, um, but in this case, for some reason, it already uh, parents it to the actual uh, group. I don't care, I don't mind, but I just think it's it's weird because it does it does it by itself, and uh, and I don't like that personally. But you know, yeah. So we make it one here, right? We create a group over here, and by default, it childs it to the group. It's weird because I didn't tell it to do that, but okay, who cares, right? Okay, so. Now we can also append this, right? We need to append this to a list so we can actually see which objects are the parents of which objects. So right now, if if we make a second object here, I'll just show you real fast. So we need to get all the spines. We're doing the same thing, right? So for the I again, and then we're gonna go S and enumerate in this case on the spine. So we wanna go through the entire spine list. We can say here again, plus is based on X form. We want to go through all the locations of all the spine locators. So S and then curve is true. Uh, trans translation is true. World space is also true. And then you can say, okay, in this case, let's call it joint. Uh, oh, let's call that. Let's call it J based on joint. Uh, radius 0. Point, oh, sorry, 0 0.08, something like that. Position, right, is position name is rick underscore spine underscore and we're gonna convert the i value into a string so okay like this see what happens well there's not actually nothing at all because i get an error because i keep forgetting those i'm so sorry It actually does it by itself, that's helpful. It actually created all the parenting for itself, but you can see now all of a sudden the fuck is my joint, right? It just disappeared. Now it's under the, uh, the leg group. It's really annoying. Um, maybe because I did it like this, did I parented? No, I did not parent it. See, now I have to parent it again. See, this is really confusing. It's just now all of a sudden parented to something else. Okay, let's just make sure that the um, root joint is not, is now on the actual world. So, okay, we're going to do a little bit differently. So, we're first going to um, make sure that it's unparented. So, the root joint is unparented. So, we're going to parent it to the world. So, based on parent, we're going to do the root joint I say W is true to world and then also absolute is true and then we're going to reparent it to the group test it out real fast fusing me I have no idea why it's doing this okay it's now in a transform it's fine so it's now at least somewhere else which is pretty real quick let me get rid of these over here And then we're gonna parent it again to the group called a brick. Again, with base of parent root joint, and then to the rig. And again, absolute strength. Put the joints. Oh, it looks, looks bigger as well, much better. Yeah, nice. Now, the reason why I say the A there as well, the absolute. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't. No, sorry. 
So what if I get rid of this one, right? The A is true. Let's do it here as well. A is true. Now I'm going to create the locators and create the joints. All of a sudden, it's already transformed, right? So by saying absolute, it makes sure that it's not part of the, uh, the transform group. So this is the reason why we're using the transform. Uh, that's why we're using the absolute. Absolute is true. Now it's actually properly done. Great locators, great joints, and I have nice hierarchy as well of all the joints. And now I also have nice, nice naming. So the roots, spine, spine one, spine two, spine three. Perfect. So now the hierarchy is nice and organized. Take it what we want. Let's just delete the locators again. Okay, so this is how you do the spine. Um, now we're going to do the eye case and stuff in a different video. So we're going to now make the arm. Um, you can do it in two ways, right? You can find all, all the uh, children of all the arms, for example, or you could just do it manually. You could just do the hard coding. Um, in this case, I kind of prefer that, so I'm going to. Um, Go for the left upper arm it's based on ls and then we find the upper arm that we create now if you're not sure what it's called again you can actually just look in your in your code right in this case it's the hands let's for the upper arm let's locate the upper arm look upper arm right so we need to find this object and you do the same thing for position you just find the position of the object and then and then you make a new joint um, in this case, we don't actually have to use the list runtime like this because we find the actual object itself, right? You also could say here again, type locator is true. Of the sorry, type is locator to make sure that you don't get the shape if you're unsure. Like this, and then you can again just make the actual joint. So let's go for L uh, of arm position. Uh, say again, based on X form. Which object do you want to get the object, the position from? In this case, the upper arm. We want to get a query, we want to get the translation of that object, we want to get make sure it's in both space, like this. And then we create a new joint, so let's call this uh, L of R joint, it's based on joints. And again, radius is 0 0.1, position is R, left upper R, oh, I see a typo, position. And then the name would be left oh, rig left upper arm. It should be a capital like this. Okay, see if it actually works. So I'm going to look like an idiot. There you go. See, now I'm looking like an idiot. See, right, the actual of R is still here. So I probably couldn't find the object. So this is the leg rig. Arm it should be here, right? So, let's check out what's actually causing this. Um, oh, let's just first do this, delete them all. Thank you very much. So, right, so probably this one over here. So, I need to find the actual position. So, I'm going to print the left upper arm. Push. Could be that zero, zero, zero. You don't even look at the actual objects. Yeah, so it's on why it's wrong. So I'm gonna everything fucked up right now. I can delete these real fast. Great right, joints. Keep pressing this button. So it should be here, right? But it's not. It's here. This is this is really iffy. Um, I've had this before, so let's see if we can solve this on the spot, which would be interesting. Oh. Just need to group for a second. Now the reason I had this before, um, because it was in a group, right? So let's 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 have a quick look at it. See if we can solve this right here, right now. That would be kind of cool. So let's not make a group. Let's grab this. Let's we see that the upper arm. I'm gonna move that one to that position. And then 
right here. It's going to schedule this real fast. Then this should be a little bit different. See, this does if this makes any difference. It's really annoying, in my opinion. Yep, so that's not good. Still haven't figured out why. It's the annoying part. The up arm is there. Position is perfect, actually. But still, that's it on the wrong location. I think we're getting the wrong object. So this is programming at its core, <laughs> finding what the hell just went wrong. I'm just gonna locate the F up R. Let's get ready to locate the type for a second. Maybe this will work. Let's do this again. Let's close it. Make joints. And there it is. We have now solid this one. But now you can see yeah, everything's fucked up again. So I'm gonna re-evolve this. It is really iffy. There you go. Now it works fine. So the locator you shouldn't do that. Okay. Oh, right. then you can actually continue on with the elbow, and let's just do one more. Show you how to do it. And let's get rid of everything. Also the groups. Let's make sure that we get rid of them. So let's do the next part over here. So this would be the left elbow. Let's paste on LS. Left elbow. And then we get the elbow position. Again, we get the X4. Uh, L elbow. And then we query. It's true. Translation. It's true. No space. Also true. And then we create a new joint, so elbow, joint, that's the position, in this case elbow position, and the name would be Rick, oh, oh, L, Jesus Christ, elbow. Okay, let's be creating joints. And there we go. Okay, the cool part is everything is parented by default, so you don't have to do anything when it comes to that part. And I can just continue, right? So you can just go on and on and on. Um, let's do one more. Let's do one more and then we're gonna stop. This is just, it's just copy paste, right? So you just copy paste this, let's change the name. Shall be the hand. I'm guessing this is hand. The wrist. It's the wrist. Throw my hand. So be the wrist. Boss. Let me get the wrist joint. Wrist. Oh, we should probably delete that from first. There you go. See? Okay. Just copy paste at this point. Okay. So, uh, hopefully, the next video uh, will be a little bit uh, sooner. I'm just going to continue doing this so we can do the entire rig. And then the next video, we're going to get, uh, we're going to add the IK. And FK, etc. etc. Hopefully, for the next video, I can actually show you how to do OOP in Python if I actually can get it working properly. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again very, very, very soon.